there's no doubting that most plants love the sun, particularly flowering ones. But one of the most common questions I'm asked is what can I plant that will look good in the shade? Gardening in limited sun is a challenge, but it's one that John Aitken thrives on. His large south-facing block is in the Sutherland area, in Sydney's south. Not only is it shady, but it's steep too. John's passionate about natives, so much so that he's president of the Australian Plant Society of New South Wales. So what started your interest in native plants, John? I became interested in Australian plants as a boy. Growing up in Caringbar, we were surrounded by bush, and I just used to love to spend many hours just exploring the bush, even as a toddler. So um, I guess uh, that was the first inspiration. John's property has some majestic Sydney red gums, river views, and backs onto a nature reserve. John started work on the garden around 30 years ago. How did you go about constructing a garden on a steep block like this? Oh, well, the first thing I had to do was create um, the living areas for the kids to play on, and also then I started by terracing the block and creating the pathways and, of course, the stairways to get access to this garden. And then the canopy, of course, things like this beautiful native frangipani. That's a lovely tree. Yeah. It is a beautiful tree. It's a very fast-growing tree, and it produces beautiful uh, yellow flowers in summertime. You can see over there bird's nest ferns and the elkhorn, which is growing from the trunks of the tree, that it really uh, creates that rainforest feel. Oh, you've got to have those epiphytes That's hanging right. down, I reckon. Well, so many people have them on boards against walls, and yet they just look so beautiful when they're in their natural environment hanging off trees. How do you make the most of these low light conditions, knowing what to plant where? Well, that was mainly a lot of trial and error, lots of errors, but we had a lot of successes. Mm -hmm. And when you, uh, the successes are not just what will grow here, but also the plants which will complement each other. Take just, for example, this necklace fern, this beautiful ground cover, this very delicate hen and chicken fern, and then the bird's nest ferns. Ah, oh, it's beautiful, and they're all from the same group of ferns, the aspleniums. That's right. It's amazing that they complement each other so well. And incredible diversity within the one, one genus. Yeah. I'm loving your kangaroo fern. Yeah, Angus, this is one of my favourite ferns. Not only does it go in complete shade, but it also climbs the tree beautifully, as you can see, and also makes a magnificent uh, ground cover. But in addition, it's one of the few ferns that has its own perfume. Just smell that. Mm. Yeah, it's un very unusual, isn't yes. it? What have we got down here? Well, we've got this beautiful wedding lily that grows well and flowers well in the shade. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know it as crinum, so what, I've never had the wedding lily term before. Well, in September, October, it produces this beautiful head of white, slightly perfumed flowers. And legend has it that the early colonists actually used to cut the head off and use it for their wedding posies. Right, I've got four daughters, so I'll remember that. <laughs> Cheap way of producing flowers. What are your favourite plants here? Well, one of my favourite plants would have to be the Gaimir lily. It's a beautiful accent plant, it's drought resistant, and above all, it grows in the shade. The other bonus of the Gaimir lily, I think, is when you get this beautiful flower spike coming up and there's magnificent red flower at the top there. gives you greater satisfaction in the garden. Angus, the greatest buzz that I've had from the garden is trying different types of plants considering the conditions and that terrific sense of satisfaction you get, get from those plants that actually grow and they grow well. Mm -hmm. 